Hey there everybody and welcome. It's uh, Jackie here from stampingjack.com and welcome to this week's Facebook Live. Um, I apologise that I'm a bit later than normal today um, but I uh, had a ridiculous day at work. Um, nothing like a 12 hour Monday to set you up for the week. So I was I only got home at about just gone eight o'clock so I've had time to have a little bit of refresh a cup of tea and I'm so ready to um, do a bit of stamping and crafting with you guys. It's uh, just the tonic I need after a long hard day at the office. So where are we today? Hi Fran, welcome. Um, so yes, I've... Uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? I might be a bit... Uh, <laughs> bear with me, I might be it might take me a little while to get going, to get my head in the zone as they say. Um, so yes, um, this week we've got, hi Doreen, welcome, um, I've got a real, a real treat for you. Um, I've been working recently on the um, paper shares um, that are getting ready to send out in the next little while um, and it's gotten me thinking, as it would do, about designer series paper and how to use designer series paper. Um, and so what I've got for you tonight is 10 cards. Um, with just some different ideas on different ways to use your designer series paper. Now, obviously, there are millions <laughs> of ways to do it. Hi, Anne. Hi, Diane. Welcome. There are infinite ways to use your designer series paper. So this is definitely not a um, an exhaustive list, but just a couple of little ideas um, to kind of help you out and just give you some, some inspiration, I guess. So first things first, let's do our um, prize draw. So the last week, the prize for sharing this video um, was a £5 money off voucher. And the winner this week is Lynn. I know I said it, Lou, but it's, it's Lynn Groves. So congratulations, Lynn. You have until this Sunday to place your order. And I will, um, so just PM me when you're ready and I'll sort you out with your discount. Um, now, uh, this week, or should I say next week's prize, will be a pack of our Eastern Gold vinyl stickers. These are super, and I think these gold accents would be really cool for Christmas, actually, um, even though they're not specifically Christmas. So as usual, all you need to do to be entered into the draw to win one of these is just share this video. Very, very easy. Um, share it now if you like, whenever or when you're watching the replay. Um, just leave me a comment to let me know that you shared, and I'll enter you into the draw. Um, what are the news have we got today? Oh yes, um, you may have seen my post earlier that uh, this week is World Card Making Days on the 6th of October. Um, so this week only, um, we've Stampin' Up! have reduced certain essential items by 10% um, from now until the 7th, which is Sunday, I think. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's stamp sets on there, there's um, card stock, there's uh, dimensionals are on there. So there's lots of like the essentials that you need to do it um, to, do, to do your card. So it's a great opportunity and a great time to stock up on those essentials for your 10% discount. So make sure to check that out um, and go have a look. Um, there's also going to be um, a new promotion coming um, next month. I've seen, I've seen it. There's going to be um, for one month only. There will be um, some exclusive products, stamp sets, die sets, some accessories and stuff, and they're absolutely stunning. So I'm looking forward to getting my hands on some of those, and you guys will be able to see it next month. As a demonstrators, we always get to see everything a month early. Um, so I think that's it on the announcements. So we better get going because I've got to get through 10 cards tonight. So let's start with, let's have a look. Ah, oh, yes. Sometimes I find that on our designer series paper, sometimes I love a pattern, but when I'm confronted with something like this, I struggle um, because I just find the pattern a little bit, busy for my taste. You guys who know me um, know that um, I like my cards clean and simple. So, you know, when I put something like that on there, that looks really nice, but then as soon as I start to add stuff to it, I just, mm. um, and so when I see patterns like this, even though I really like them, um, I struggle to put them on cards. Um, yes, Kat, they are um, snowflake themed, so you should enjoy them. Um, so what I tend to do when I've got a pattern as busy as this is that I tend to just, 
I'll take a piece and just make that my focal point and I find that that tends to help. So that's going to be my first one because I'm often put off and I know a lot of people are put off by these big busy patterns I'm trying to transfer it onto a small card. So all I've got here is a piece of A4 card stuck cut in half the long way and I've just cut a piece and I'm going to layer it onto Black Grey Bliss. Okay. Now, one of the great things, or one of the key things about making your designer series paper work for you is, um, is to try and use the coordinating colours. And all of the pet the packs have that written on the back, and also it's in our catalogues. Um, and to be honest, this is one of the main reasons I joined Stampin' Up is that I had lots of pattern paper. And you go to put your paper on your card, and you think, oh, it just doesn't match. It doesn't look right. Um, and this just lets you pick out exactly the colours that coordinate, so it really pulls it together. So I've just cut a rectangle, and then I'm going to just pop that on dimensionals. Great way to get a lot of cards um, out of your paper. So, hi Jude, <laughs> welcome back, glad you found us. Um, so this is, you know, you'd get quite a lot of pieces out of one 12 by 12 sheet of this so I'm just going to pop it in the center there so it really makes it the focal point and lets it shine without it taking over too much and then I'm going to take um I'm just going to do a little oh oh we're back again so I've got the Woodward stamp set and I really like this sentiment here I put that on a lot of my cards so a note for you Oops, excuse me, just get a block and I'm going to stamp this in black bliss again. Just keep the color scheme tight and coordinated. And I'm just going to stamp it down here to the right. And there we go. A very, very simple way to just use your paper and just let it do all the talking, so to speak, um, without it completely taking over your card. So there we go. Card number one. Told you they'd all be simple. All right, so let's let me keep the cards in one place. So, in contrast to this sort of paper, by the way, this is the I want to say petal promenade um, designer series paper. Can't quite remember. Um, so, in contrast to that, quite often we have very subtle. Um, patterns and in fact on most of our designer series papers you'll see that we usually have a very striking pattern on one side and a much more subtle pattern on the other so you've got a lovely marbled effect here okay now this piece is from the tranquil textures um start uh, pack see i'll get my words out today and when you've got a simple piece like this what i like to do is just simply stamp on there and what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to heat emboss on this one so I've got my really big thank you so much stamp. You'll see this was one stamp and I have cut it because quite often I just want the thank you. But for this one, I'm going to use thank you so much. So when I cut it like that, I can still put it back together and stamp the whole thing if I want. So I'm going to need a bigger block than that. Okay. And let's get our embossing stuff. Thanks, guys, for the shares. Good stuff. The more people that watch my videos, the better it is. It helps me to keep them coming. And it just makes me feel good to have you all with me. I love it. Um, right, so we're going to stamp and emboss in white. So we've done our embossing body and use that to just remove all the static. Okay. Then I'm going to stamp that down in the center. I'm going to stamp it down a little actually. Okay. And then we're going to add some white embossing powder to this. So yeah, don't be if you don't have to emboss, but do not be afraid to stamp on your paper. Okay, treat it just like cardstock. Got a little extra in there. There we go, and then let's put it back. Hi, Lynn. Oh, you you weren't here at the beginning. You won the voucher, so congratulations. 
Well done. So you've got till this Sunday to spend it. So you've got five pounds off your order. Right, let's grab the heat tool. So excuse me, this will get loud for a second. And as I said before, when you're heat embossing, heat your make your heat wait for your heat tool to heat up first before you bring it to your card stop because it will be it will warp a little bit less then. So we're just going to it's fine, it's gonna do that. Let's bring it up so you can see. See that there we go, there's the magic. need to get something one second mm. needed some ribbon for that all right so coming back to what I was saying before about color coordination the color in here is balmy blue so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to layer it onto some whisper white cardstock and then onto a balmy blue base now I like to put it, put an embossed piece onto another layer because that helps to then flatten it back out again. Okay, so we're just going to do that. There we go, and then I'm just going to add some ribbon around the top. And again, if you're thinking about Christmas, this is another great way to make a lot of easy Christmas cards very, very quickly. Just cut lots of panels to this size, which is uh, 13 and a half centimeters by nine and a half centimeters. Don't ask me the inches because I don't know. Um, I work in centimeters. Right, and there we go. So we've got a nice little bow on the top. And then I'm just going to add a glue dot underneath that to hold it in place. So yeah, you don't have to heat emboss it. You could simply add a die cut sentiment on there or just stamp it. Either way will work fine. It's a bit twisted. There we go. And then we'll pop some dimensionals on the back. There they are. Ooh, got two there. Oop. So there we have it. Card number two. And again, you can see just how the color coordination works really, really well. All right, so that's idea two. Stamp or emboss on your paper. Let's see what we've got next. What's up next? What's this one? So the next one, ah yes. So they're using up, those two bits were using up fairly sizable panels um, of designer series paper. But when I started preparing for this particular um, session, um, I was looking for ways that I could use up my scraps. And I usually end up with lots of little strips and things left over from trimming down my paper. So what I've got here is this is the Tranquil Textures um, cardstock again. And I've just got some little three centimeter squares, okay? And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and, and then I've got a, set, a, a strip here, which is four centimeters wide. I'm going to line that one there. Okay, and I'm just using a dimensional. So I find when you're trying to line up pieces, I find it best to do the ends first and then work your way in. Okay, and I'm going to try and make sure that the stripes go alternate ways as well, just, just because. Okay. And I'm not pressing these down yet, and I'm just laying them there because I want to make sure that I've got my spacing the way I want it. 
There we go. Happy with that. Okay, so we've got a cute little panel. And all I'm going to do is just attach it to my card here. Very, very, very simple. Okay. And as I say, a great way to use up those little scraps of paper that you have or that you find lying around after trimming for other projects. Okay, and then I'm going to take my vertical greeting stamp set. And again, I'm just going to, I'm going to use the just because actually. Okay, and I love this stamp set because the greetings are vertical. You just get it's just a little bit more interesting and I'm going to pick up one of the colours in the paper which is Tranquil Tide and just stamp that. Now let's see if I can get this straight. I'm just going to stamp it alongside like so. And there we go. Again, another really simple card and you could do this with any kind of paper, any kind of paper at all. So that's card number three. Next up, what have we got? Ah, yes. So next up is the other thing you can do with your paper is to punch shapes with your paper. So what I've got here is our balloon, um, built balloon punch. And I'm using our, um, this is a, a pack of our new in colours. And I just thought these patterns and these colours are so bright and cheerful. They're perfect for this kind of card. So... I've already cut a few balloons in lovely lipstick, and then we've got some of the pineapple punch. So, and again, another fantastic way to use up your scraps. Okay, and let's see, we've got, let's see if we can get one over here. So we've got some, the call me clover. Can I get a big one out of this scrap? Ooh, just about perfect. Look how little wastage there is on that. And then let's see, do I have a scrap of the blue? No, I don't. So I'm going to, and all I'm going to do now is to just arrange these. Let's see. I need some more yellow, so let's get some more of these. Let's do two more. Now, I'm not being precise with this because I know that as I lay these on, I'll forget where I've put them and all sorts of stuff. So I just want to get a feel for just want to get a feel for placement in terms of have I got enough on here for what I want. Okay. We need another green, so I've got another scrap of green. It's just a little one this time. I'll do the spots. And then we'll have a little yellow one poking down here. Okay. So I'll arrange all those in one second. And then to coordinate with it, I'm using the Happy Birthday Gorgeous stamp set. And I'm just going to stamp, uh, let's see, party time onto this one. And let's see, what colour shall we use? I will use, I'm going to use the Call Me Clover. Because then it will make a good card for a boy, perhaps. Okay. So I'm just going to stamp this onto a strip. Again, this is a strip of white cardstock that's left over from trimming my sheets down to these small sizes. So there we go. Okay. And then also in this set, we've got here, we've got the balloon strings, so to speak. So I'm just going to 
stamp a couple of those. Oh, open my stamp set again. Right. Oh, it's gonna. Okay, there we go, and now I can start sticking down. So I'm going to start at the back. Okay, just going to use some glue. Okay. So I'm sticking the ones at the back down and then I can pop up the ones that I'm laying in front. Okay, now let's do a stripe. No, I want a dot there. And I want a stripe here. There we go. We'll just pop these on. How many of you have the same struggle about placing your random <laughs> items onto your card? So much easier to do it when they're regular because you know exactly where you want to put them. But when you want them to look random, it's a bit difficult. Okay. So now at the, when, as we come to the bottom... We want to line up our balloons like so. There, okay. So just making sure that the bottoms here line up with a string, otherwise it'd look a bit odd. All right, want that one there. And you can tuck them in behind or have them in front. It's entirely up to you. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to... Do I want to pop... Yeah, I want to pop this one up as well. Yeah, Kat, you're right. Don't think about your random placing too much. Otherwise, you'll be there all night. Just get it on there. It is what it is. No one will ever know what it was meant to be. There we go. And then I'm just going to layer that onto a plain white card base. So very, very simple. Now, if I wanted to, I could add a layer behind in, say, the green or the red or one of the colours if I wanted to pick it up. But I'm just keeping this super simple because it's all about the patterned paper. So there we go. Easy peasy. What's that now? Card number four we're on. And again, great way to use up your scraps. You could do the same if you've got a flower punch or any kind of shape punch. It would work great. And obviously you could do it with your dies as well. Um, but I find when cutting out multiples like that, you really want, well, I like to use punches. Okay, so there we go. Right, what do you want to do next? Let's have a look what's this one. Ah, oh, yes. So this next one is adding a strip. Now, those of you that know me will be familiar with this particular layout of paper on a card. I love just having, and in fact, it's a bit like this one here. I love having a vertical stripe. But I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to create an, uh, a, an inset panel. So let me get my trimmer. Okay, so you'll see that my designer series paper panel is the same length as my cardstock. Okay, and what I want is 
I want to trim it so that I have, what is that? About three centimeters, I think. Let's move that other way. So yeah. So I want a piece that's about three centimeters. Okay. And that will go there, like so. And then I want a piece, let's see, three, I want another piece that's probably about five centimeters. I may change this, but let's just see. Okay, so now I have a gap. And actually I want this a bit smaller, so I'm gonna make that four centimeters. That's more like it, okay? And what's gonna happen is this is going to go underneath, okay? Like that. But just wait one second. I'm gonna keep this piece because I'm gonna do some stamping now. So this is going to be a Merry Christmas card. So I'm going to use the Timeless Tidings um, stamp set and this lovely, long Merry Christmas. And I'm going to stamp this in Merry Merlot, which is the coordinating colour to the cardstock or paper. Words are hard tonight. It's obviously been a long day. Right, let's see. I'm going to pop that in the centre. I can trim it later if I want to. Okay, so let's bring in our card. And I'm using Sahara Sand, which again is one of the colours in the cardstock, and Merry Merlot is what the card base is. I keep saying cardstock, I mean paper. I mean paper. Okay, and then I think on this one, I'm just going to get some Sahara Sand because the other panels need a little something. So I'm going to just stamp the poinsettia here from the stamp set on it. So let me get a piece of scrap paper from somewhere. This will do. Don't need my balloon punch anymore. Okay. And let's just, just want to create some really you made up the time that's textures kit and I have to say, I've had my eye on that. It looks gorgeous. And I love this stamp set because I think if you could only get one stamp set that would give you a lot of versatility, um, this would be it because you've got these images and you've got the gorgeous sentiments. Um, so it's a real all-rounder. Okay. There you go. So now we're just going to stick our paper down onto our card base like so okay and then I'm going to take my ah I need some no, just dimensional should be fine so then I'm going to take my panels That's quite right, Anne. It's such a fantastic set. And I think it's one of those ones that, I think it could be quite easily overlooked, to be honest. Um, it's just one of those ones that doesn't jump off the page um, in the catalogue. But I think it's a real keeper. A slow burner, as they say. Right, so then what we're gonna do is we're just going to line up our pieces on either side. So for those of you that don't know, this Timeless Tiding stamp set that I'm using comes or coordinates with a kit that makes up, I think it's 20 Christmas cards. So it has all the bits that you need. Just add the stamp set. So there we go. Okay, and then we'll come back to our sentiment. 
And I'm just going to lay that across the centre and then trim it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of blue on this side and a little bit on that side. Go and then just trim it off. Oh, got something stuck on my scissors. Whoops. There we are. Still got a bit of ribbon stuck on my scissors. That's gone crooked. So there we go. You can use your designer series paper to create a lovely, interesting insert on your cards. There we go. What are we at now? Anybody keeping count? How many cards have we done? I think that was, that was card number five. We're halfway through. Alrighty, so what have we got next? Ah, yes, yes, yes. I'm going to do some die cutting on this one. Okay. So, again, I've just cut a piece of, our, I think this is our Merry and Bright um, Christmas uh, paper. So that's just cut at 10 centimetres by 14. And then I've cut a piece of white cardstock exactly the same size just to fit over the top. All right. And I'm going to do some stamping. And where's my... I'm going to use real red, so I'm going to use the Merry Christmas to All stamp set. And again, for me, this is another just very essential uh, stamp set. So let's have a look. Okay. So let's do that. Okay. And I can get it all on one block. So I'm going to put on the top here and then the bottom here. Okay. So I'm stamping this in real red onto my cardstock. Okay. And then what I'm going to do take my dies, my circle dies, and I've got, I'm just going to, let's see, I've got some different sizes here. Right, I'm going to do those two there, and then I'm going to bring out my punches for the rest. So let me get the big shot. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just cut out these two circles. Now, you could use punches, but I find they don't always reach right the way in as far to the centre of the cardstock as you'd like. So that's why I'm using the dies for these two, and I'll use my punches for the others. Okay. There we go. Let's grab my punches. Some small ones. And I'm just punching randomly here. Okay. Creating various sized holes across my card. Let's see, let's do one on there. And then I think. A small one up here. There we go. Okay. And then what happens is that when I lay, where do I put my bits? Here we go. When I lay my card underneath, the pattern shows through. So let's just see. No, I prefer it like that. So all I'm going to do is use my dimensionals and you're going to put quite a few on here because you've got quite a few holes. So you want the card to stand up to create that aperture. Okay. 
Don't think anyone will ever have seen me use quite so many dimensionals on a card before. Don't think I've ever done it. Well, no, I have. Just not very often. Okay, and then I'm just going to pop a little one in there. And one in the corner. And one there. And now let's see if I can remember and get every single one of these off. So again, this would be a really fun card if you had a really brightly coloured piece of paper behind it. It'd make a really fun um, child's birthday card, I think. Anything, really. Okay, so then we're just going to lay that over the top. Like so. And then we're just going to glue that onto our card base, which is in real red. Which again is one of the coordinating colours. Yes. And there you have it. Cool. So what's that? Card number six. We're trucking along. We're working our way through them. Now what have we got next? Um, next I'm going to continue with our circles. Okay, I'm going to use my punch this time. I'm going to use the three quarter inch punch. So what I've got here is a, yeah, I've got a very vanilla card base and I've got a piece of, again, piece of Christmas paper. And what I'm going to do is use my punch and I'm going to punch out 10 small circles. So again, this is another great way to use up your scraps. All right, so let's gather all those in. Okay, and what I'm going to do is make a little Christmas tree. Okay. Again, we'll just get a rough idea of placement for them first. Okay. Let's see. go happy with that and then I'm going to I've die cut a star for the top um, from the starlight stimulus which coordinates with the star of light stamp set this is a stamp set that you'll find in the main catalog it's carried over from last year and I love it and I'm just going to use the Merry Christmas from the bottom it's just a super size and font so let me just grab that And I'm going to stamp that before I glue my pieces down. I want to do my stamping first, okay? Because then if I get it wrong, I can stick my pieces down some, some other way. All right, so we're going to use Mossy Meadow because that's the coordinating color to the paper. I'm just going to do that on the bottom. Let's see if I've got it straight. Yep, that will do. And then more dimensionals. I'm just going to stick those all down. So again, a really fantastic way to use up lots of little scraps of paper to make a really cute Christmas card. This would be a cool one for the kids actually to make themselves because they could just punch out the circles and have great fun just punching into all the paper and creating millions and millions of circles. There we go. Okay. Now, as I say, I haven't covered all the possible uses of designer series paper. Um, and one of the things I was going, I was, I thought about perhaps covering, but I thought I've done it already, is obviously doing a one sheet wonder with your designer series paper is a great way to get maximum use out of it. And I did a couple of videos um, not that long ago um, in terms of 
a template for six by six sheets of paper and a template for 12 by 12. So um, when I get round to posting this, I will also add the links to those um, templates for you. Because again, coming up to Christmas, one sheet wonders are a great way to get lots and lots of cards out of a single sheet of paper. Right, so there we go. Whoop. And now we have our, we want our star. I'm going to put that on a mini dimensional. Like so. There you go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as they say. All right, and you can see I've not used up a lot of paper at all. I could probably get another two Christmas trees out of that piece if I wanted to. So that's card number eight. Let's see how we're doing. Just gonna check that we're still going. Do, 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 do. Can you still see me guys? Because I can't see it on my page. Let me just let me just double check something. Hang on. Oh yes. think I'm there, just bear with me. Ah yes, there we are. Sorry guys, I hadn't seen the comments in a while so I wasn't sure if we were still going or not. My signal out here has been a bit hit and miss recently. So I see some hearts and likes, so you're still with me, great. Okay, let's get these out of the way. So what have we got next? Ah yes. So next up is, um, obviously, our paper has two sides. And um, quite often it can be quite tricky to decide which side to use because they're both so beautiful. Um, and I personally um, do struggle <laughs> with mixing patterns. Um, I don't like, generally, multiple patterns on my cards. Um, I like to have just one. I don't like them too busy. Um, so I don't tend to show two sides of paper very often on my cards. But I thought this is a really cool way um, of just adding a little bit of extra interest. So you can see I have a piece. Again, this is from our Peaceful Noel, um, I think it's called. Um, got a shine on there, didn't we? No, that's all right. Uh, peaceful Noel. So you could leave it like that because it's beautiful, um, but we want to make it a little bit more interesting. And like I was saying earlier, usually the back of our um, paper, it has a much plainer pattern on the other side. Okay. Um, so all I've done is I've cut a piece of cardstock um, the same size um, and I've used Tranquil Tide because that's, again, coordinating colour. It's really important to use the coordinating colours for your cardstock because that's what really makes your paper shine. I mean, this one literally shines because it's got gorgeous copper highlights on it, but that's what really makes your paper work on your cards. And in fact, that was one of the main reasons I actually got interested in stamping up in the first place was because I had lots of gorgeous paper and I had lots of gorgeous card, but then when I tried to match them together, they just never quite, even though they were coordinating or sort of the same color, it just never looked right. And then when you do these and everything matches, it's just super. Okay, so we've got that. Now I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like to see the join. So what I've got is a piece of art, this gorgeous Tranquil Tide Velvet Texture Ribbon. It's absolutely beautiful. And can you see the difference when you just place that border between the two? Again, it brings the colours together and it just finishes it off nicely. So I'm going to put some snail on the other side and then just place my ribbon. Okay, and just tuck it in around the back and then the same on the other side and then we'll just pop that up Ooh, sticky side down okay and that's going to go onto a grey granite card base 
Okay, and again, yeah, because that's picking up one of the colours in the paper. And it does say, it's those little details that just pull everything together nicely. Okay, so now let's just lay that on there. All right, and then I've die cut a circle in white and a uh, scalloped circle, just a little bit bigger in the copper. Again, just to pick up the copper highlights. I'm just going to stamp the word Noel into my, I'm going to use Tranquil Tie. Again, just keeping the colour scheme really simple, letting the paper shine because it is beautiful. Okay. And then with my Sahara Sand, I'm going to take the, this one. Okay, and I'm just going to stamp that in the background a little bit. So let's get that out and bring back in my scrap piece of paper. <clears throat> oh, I've done that tranquil tide. Don't want to do that. Let's clean that off. There we go. I want Sahara sand. Okay, and then a couple of little bits. There we go. Alrighty, and then I'm going to attach this to the foil using some wet glue. Okay, and then to the base using dimensionals. Oh, let's try and get that Noel straight. And there you have it. So again, sometimes all you need to do is just trim your cardstock and flip one piece over because obviously it will always coordinate and provide a lovely contrast. So that's our second to last card. We've got one card left. Are you still with me? It's been a bit of a marathon tonight. Uh, oh no, no, we've got two cards left. What am I talking about? <sighs> right, so the next card um, is kind of Going back to the idea we had earlier of creating an aperture through which to show the card, the paper, so a bit like this, okay? But for this one, I'm going to use just one single large aperture, all right? And what I'm going to do with this is I've actually cut the piece of cardstock a little bit smaller than the piece of designer series paper. So what you get is a lovely border as well as the background. Now I find that this works best with a quite a close pattern like this without lots of busyness going on. Um, so you, because otherwise you kind of lose the, um, the, the strength and the simplicity of the border. So all you want to do for this one, and you can see I've got, this is a scrap I'm using that I've already stamped on before and decided not to use it for that. Okay. And I'm going to use some of these strips. Now we have foam strips, which I could use, but they're in the cupboard on the other side of the room. I don't really want to walk that far. <laughs> so I'm going to use what's to hand. Um, it's not that critical, um, not like when we're doing shaker cards where it has to be completely covered. I just want it to be supported. So there we go. Okay. And actually I'm going to put that, put these nearer the corners. There we go. Oh, and I've made a little bit of a boo-boo, but I will fix that in a second. What I wanted, will I? I wanted to stamp on this. I should have stamped on it first. Let's see if I can manage it. 
Here's a test. Wish me luck. Uh, let's see. If I can't, then what I'll do is the usual trick of I will stamp it on a strip and stick it over the top. Um, so the colour in this is Tranquil Tide. So again, I'm going to use Tranquil Tide for my greeting. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to feel for where the flat bit is, which is there, and then stamp it down. Fingers crossed. There we go. Yay. Phew. Glad that worked. <laughs> All right. So now let's just move that back down there. All right. So we'll bring back in our piece. And the stamp set I'm using is the Dashing Deer, which you saw me play with last week. And I'm afraid I've fallen completely, madly and utterly in love with these deers. They are just so beautiful. Absolutely stunning. And again, they make a great focal point for a card. So now I'm just going to lay this down. Line it up. Okay, so we get a nice aperture there. And then somewhere here, I have die cut. Uh, I've die cut a deer, and this is from our galvanized um, metal paper. It comes in 12 by 12 sheets. I tried silver, but you see the sheen on here is quite subtle, so I felt that this actually worked a lot better. Okay, so let's just... So I'm going to attach him using glue. And we've got some... Let's see... Very specific, actually, what I'm going to do, because there aren't a lot of anchor points to glue him on with, is instead I'm going to use dimensionals on the back. Uh, let's get a mini one for his neck. Okay, so rather than try and stick him on, because he doesn't, he doesn't, there's not much overlap for him. I'm actually using the dimensionals to just hold him in place. And there we go. Okay. And then straight. Look at that side. Isn't it fabulous? This is the struggle I have with pattern paper sometimes. Is I think I can't cover that up. That's just not right. But hey, ho, you got to use it. No point having it there. And I, I tell you, I am terrible. I am a hoarder of the first order when it comes to my paper. And I've challenged myself this year to try and use it a bit more on my cards. There we go. There. Again, really, really, really easy card to do. Very, very simple. Okay, And again, you could put any, any greeting, any uh, die cut or whatever on here. Very, very easy. Alrighty, so that's that one. So now we are on to our final card. Okay. Now, you may not realise it, um, but there are a number of um, papers um, in the catalogues where the coordinating die set actually cuts out the images in the paper, which is really, really cool because it saves all that fussy cutting. Um, so, for example, here we've got the Santa's Workshop um, and Signs of Santa um, stamp set and the coordinating paper. And this paper is really, really, really cute. Um, but I just want to show you. Okay, so you've got the dies, which obviously cut out the stamped images. But they also cut out, if I show you, let's get them out of the bag here. All right. So this one cuts out the signpost. This one cuts out the little cart, and we stamped that a little while ago. This one cuts out the Santa. This one cuts out the Mrs. Claus. This one cuts out the presents in the cart. This one cuts out, which cuts out one of the elves, which one is, I think it's this elf. There we go, and this one cuts out this elf. So quite a lot of the images in this paper are actually, you can cut them out using the dies. And there are a few of our designer series papers 
that that's the case. So keep an eye out for those because it's a really great way, again, to just get the most from your coordinating products. So what we're going to do for this one is we're going to die cut the Santa. So I'm just going to put these other ones away. Okay, bring in the big shot. Just going to line this up. Yep. I think that's moved. There you go. run that through and look beautiful die cut for your cards isn't that amazing absolutely gorgeous so if you imagine how many of these die cuts you could get out of out of your paper there's about four sheets or whatever in that pack that you can die cut so now let's bring back in our card so I've got a real red card base and a shaded spruce uh, layer and then we have a white layer okay and then we've got a circle and we're going to put him there um, and then we're going to do some stamping so we've got wishing you everything on your list and more so let's just, these are two separate stamps, but I'm going to line them up together on the one block so we can stamp it all in one go. And then I'll stick, even stick the stamp on the right way around. Let's just check that that will fit. Yep, and I'm going to stamp that in shaded spruce. Again, just keeping the colours all nicely coordinated. Oh, that didn't work. All right, let's flip it over and do it again. I think I've got a little bubble on my work surface here. So let's try that one again. Turn it that way. I've got a, The reason I'm turning it is I've got a little bit here, but I know that he's going to go here so I can cover it up. Let's try and get it straight. I'm trying to peer between the camera and the light. <laughs> yeah, and go for it. You'll love it. You won't regret it. There we go. And the grandkids will love these cards. Okay, so there we have it. All right, and then I want a little bit of ribbon because this card needs a little... Ah, oh, I know what I'm going to use. Let's see... Here got some of the coordinating embellishments, so let's just dig some of those out from my box of tricks. Whoa, there goes everything. There we are, and there's a little snowflake here, yeah, honey. So we've got some cute little trees and some little red and green um, accents. I've got some white ones as well, but actually I'm going to colour those. So I'm going to get my, let's see, I've got my dark shaded spruce marker, Stampin' Blends marker, and I'm just going to colour it. Okay, so we'll leave that for one second. Right, so let's just adhere our die cut to our circle. So I'm just putting glue on the bits that are going to stick to the circle. Okay, and again, the wet glue is perfect because it allows you to just move everything around for a little bit. 
plate and then we'll bring our dimensionals back. put him in the center let's see uh, yeah I want him in the center and then we're just going to add oh, I don't know where am I pick up tool is so just gonna add some little accents Oop. where's my scissors okay Oh, he's out. Oh, being tricky tonight. Let's see if we can get it up. Oh, it doesn't want to work. Let's try this. There we go. Okay, and then we'll do a red one. And no, I think that will do it. Okay, and then just very simply glued onto the layers so there you go now even if you've got paper that doesn't have a coordinating die set you can always cut the pieces out it's always possible so don't forget about fussy cutting or die cutting all right so let's just get rid of some of these and bring back in our cards because i think that is the last one um, I think if a mess just off camera is anything to go by, <laughs> then yeah, we've done tons. So let's have a look. So let's recap. So die cutting the images from your cut from your paper using the coordinating dies or fussy cutting if you don't have the dies. Then using your paper as a border and an aperture filling. Then using both sides of the paper on one piece of card always making sure to cover up the join to give it a nice pulled together look. Punching shapes with your sh paper. This makes a great little Christmas card. Make a nice tree. Punching out some circles from your front layer to create an aperture to show and let your paper peek through from the back. Similar vein, creating an inset panel for your card, for your paper even. Again, using your punch to use a great way of using up your scraps to make some balloons, flowers, whatever you like. Another great way to use scraps, just cut them into little squares and lay them in a straight line on your card. Very, very simple. Then, don't forget, if you've got a reasonably plain piece of paper, just stamp on it, or as I've done, heat emboss on it. And again, always using the coordinating papers to give it a really pulled together look. And then finally, when you've got a really busy pattern, um, just you don't need to put a lot on there. And I find just creating a little piece as a focal point um, and just framing it and a little bit of simple stamping really lets it shine without completely overpowering the card. So there you go. Ten simple ideas for using designer series paper on your card. I hope you've enjoyed it. I really enjoyed being with you guys this evening. As I said earlier, it's been a fantastic antidote to a very very stress <laughs> stressful day so thank you for being with me um let me know your favorite or if you've got a favorite um technique that you use for using up your designer series paper then share it in the comments i'd love to hear all about it please make sure to share the video to be entered into the draw to win a pack of what has disappeared now our gold art here 
a pack of our gold vinyl stickers and make sure to check out my online shop and um, because all this week's we've got 10 percent off um, various card making essentials and um, to celebrate world card making day on the 6th of october so thank you again everybody it's been lovely having you with me and uh, i will see you all again next week cheerio